Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths, a GCSE revision video uh, and this is about problems involving direct and inverse proportion. As always for more help with your GCSE or A level do check out the YouTube channel or follow the video links from Twitter. I'm going to go through various examples here, nine examples to cover all the bases on this topic. This has come up on the AQA Unit 3 paper uh, a couple of times now. Um, so here are all the bases. I'm just going to go through the basic way the questions work out um, just to show you how to lay your working. So here's question one. Y is directly proportional to X. You should be labelling these type of questions because the wording is very important. When X is 30, Y is 45. Find Y when X is equal to 40. So this statement here, Y is directly proportional to X, we can write down, therefore y is equal to k multiplied by x. k is some constant that we are to find. That will get us one mark writing that down. So there's our one mark. The second mark is to use this fact here, substitute the pair of x and y values they give you to find k, because k is a constant. Once you've found it, it's true for all x and y. So substituting in, uh, x is 30, y is 45, we'd have 45 is equal to k multiplied by 30. So therefore k would be 45 divided by 30, and 45 divided by 30 is equal to 1.5. So k is therefore 1.5. We would get our second mark for finding k by substituting values. The third mark would be to rewrite this equation with our k found. So therefore y is equal to 1.5 multiplied by x. That will get us our third mark. And lastly, we are asked to find y when x is equal to 40. So y would be 1.5 multiplied by 40. And 1.5 times 40 is 60 y is therefore equal to 60, and that will get us four marks in the exam. There are the nice, easy four marks. Example two. The voltage V volts across an electrical circuit is directly proportional to the current I flowing through the circuit. So the volts V is directly proportional to I, um, therefore V for part A is equal to K multiplied by I, k a constant. That will get us one mark. We are told, for the, to get the second mark, when i is 1.2, v is 78. So we're going to substitute those in. 78 is equal to k multiplied by 1.2. So k is therefore 78 divided by 1.2. So k is equal to 65 we get our second mark for working out k for part a. And lastly, to rewrite the equation v is equal to 65i, we would get our third mark. A question like that is always three marks. Okay? Part b, find v when i is equal to 2. v is equal to 65 multiplied by 2. V is therefore equal to 65 times 2, which is 130. Let's make sure we include our units, volts. That's part B. And lastly, part C. Find I when V is equal to 162.5. So let's substitute in this value here. 162.5 is equal to 65 multiplied by I. I is therefore equal to 162.5 divided by 65. Using our calculator there, I is therefore equal to 2.5 and the units are amps. So I equals 2.5, don't forget the units, amps. And they are our answers which we should underline for the examiner. And a question like that would be three for this one, two for this one, and two for this one, so it'd be seven marks for a question like this. Right, question uh, three. The area in centimetres squared, so we're gonna highlight all the key information here, the area in centimetres squared 
of a square is proportional to the square of its perimeter P. So let's get ourselves an easy mark. The area must equal K to the square of its perimeter P squared, where K is some constant we have to find. There's my one mark. Then we're told, when P, we are told that P is A, A is 4, so we're going to substitute those in. 4 is therefore equal to K multiplied by 8 squared. 4 is therefore equal to K multiplied by 64, which I'll write as 64K. Divided by 64, K must be 4 divided by 64, which is 1 16th. Right? So therefore we can rewrite this area is therefore 1 16th P squared. And as we've talked about in the previous video, it's probably nicer to write this as P squared over 16. And there we will get our formula. Example 4. Just reading carefully, y is proportional to the square of x. So therefore y is equal to kx squared. For k some constant, that will get us one mark. We're told y is 60 when x is 6. So substituting in, 60 is equal to k multiplied by 36. So k must be... 60 divided by 36, which is 5 thirds. Okay, leave it like that. Do not decimalize here and write a 1.6 around it. No, no, no. Keep it accurate and leave it as follows. So therefore, y is equal to 5 thirds x squared. Or we might even want to write that in a neater way. It's nice to write it as 5x squared over 3. Part A. Part B. We are told to find y when x is 4.5. So y is equal to 5, 4.5 squared over 3. It's just a substitution game here in our calculator. And we get ourselves y is equal to 33.75. We can decimalize it here because we're not rounding or anything. And finally, part C. Find the value of x for which y is 135. Substituting in y is 135. 135 is equal to 5x squared over 3. We could multiply by 3 and divide by 5. So multiply both sides by 3. We would get 405 is equal to 5x squared. Dividing by 5, we would get 81 is equal to x squared. And taking square roots... If I square root this, I get x is 9, or x is equal to negative 9. Both of those are acceptable answers here. Do be careful when you take square roots, you get a positive and a negative. Example 5. Okay, next question. The mass m in kilograms of a solid cube is proportional to the cube of the length l. Uh, and it tells you some starting conditions. So let's write for part A, let's get ourselves one mark. The mass is proportional to, so equals K multiplied by the length, and it's the cube of the length, so L cubed, for K some constant. Let's substitute in the two values we're given. L is 0 0.2 and M is 90 to find this K. So 90 is equal to K multiplied by 0.2 cubed. So in particular, k divided by 0.2 cubed is 90 divided by 0.2 to the power of 3. So 90 divided by 0.2 cubed is equal to 11,250. So therefore, um, we can rewrite our equation. m is equal to 11,250 uh, multiplied by L cubed. And there's part A done for us. We found that formula, that, that would have been three marks. Let's do part B. Find M when L is 0 0.3. So M would be 11,250 multiplied by 0 0.3 
cubed. So it's just a calculator exercise times 0 0.3, 11,250 times 0 0.3 cubed. M would be 303.75. And let's just be careful to have units is kilograms. And lastly, it says find L when M is 2000. And it says give your answer to three significant figures. So therefore, um, M is 2000, substituting in, we would have 2000 is equal to 11,250 L cubed. So L cubed is therefore 2000 divided by 11,250. And L is therefore the cube root of this number, 2000 divided by 11,250. So in our calculator, in one move, we can type the cube root of 2000 divided by 11,250. We get ourselves 0.56228, etc. If we want to give it to three significant figures, these we look at the fourth significant figure is 2, so we would write L is 0.562, and the units, L is in centimetres, so centimetres. And we're done then. Right, next, <clears throat> example 6. We have when a fixed volume of water is poured into a cylindrical jar, the depth D of the water is inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area, A, uh, and it tells us some initial conditions. So firstly, um, the depth is inversely proportional, and that means it's equal to K over um, the cross-sectional area, which is A. Then we have some initial conditions. 40 and 120. Remember, sorry, just in case we didn't get that, inversely means it's proportional to 1 over the number. Okay, so the k, the constant ends up on top and the uh, other variable ends up on the bottom of a fraction. So substituting in 120 is equal to k over 40 times both sides by 40. k would be 120 times 40, which is 4,800. So therefore, our formula is D is equal to 4,800 over A. There's our three marks. Part B, substituting in, find A when D is 150. 150 is equal to 4,800 divided by A. We want to find A, so we can multiply up by A. 150A is equal to 4,800. So A is 4,800 divided by 150, which is equal to 32. What's our unit? A is centimetres squared. C, find D when A is 60. So D is 4,800 divided by A, which is 60. 4,800 divided by 60 is 80. So D is equal to 80, and our unit is in centimetres. So we're done for example 6. Example 7, the force of attraction, F, newtons, between two spheres is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So this sounds quite complicated. But the force newtons between two spheres is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the centres of the spheres. So we can write the force is K over, the inverse tells us over, the square of the distance. So K over D squared. And we have some boundary conditions. When D is 0.2, F is 0.0006. So therefore, to find K, we would say 0.006 is equal to K over 2 squared. So K would be 0.0006 times 2 squared, which is 4. And we would get K is equal to 0.024. So writing our formula, F is equal to 0.024 over d squared. Okay, then for part b, find f when d is 2.5. f is equal to 0.024 over 2.5 squared. And we get ourselves um, f is equal to 0.00384, and the unit is newtons, so newtons. And for part C, 
Find D when F is this, give your answer to three significant figures. So 0 0.001 is equal to 0 0.024 over uh, D squared. Multiplying by D squared, 0 0.01 D squared is equal to 0 0.024. Dividing by 0 0.01, D squared is 0 0.024 divided by 0 0.001. and we get 24, so d squared is equal to 24. Taking square roots, d is therefore equal to 4.8989, etc. And to three significant figures, we look at the four significant figure, it's eight, so we round up, d is equal to 4.90, and this would be in meters. Okay, to three significant figures. When we take the square root there, we don't consider a negative because it's a distance, so you can't have a negative distance in the sort of work we're doing. Okay, example eight. The speed s of a particle is uh, directly proportional to the square root of its kinetic energy. So the speed is directly proportional, not inversely anymore, to the square of its kinetic energy, sorry, to the square root of its kinetic energy. So it's is equal to k multiplied by the square root of e, for k a constant, e is 225 when s is 40, so sub in 40 equals k square root of 225, 40 is equal to k multiplied by 15, so k is therefore equal to 40 divided by 15, which is equal to 8 thirds. So therefore, S equals 8 thirds root E. So part B then, uh, find S when E is 900. So S is equal to 8 thirds, the square root of 900. S is equal to 8 thirds multiplied by 30. S is therefore equal to 80 and the unit s we're doing in speed it doesn't actually give us a unit so we're not too worried about that and part c rearrange the formula to find e in terms of s we have s is equal to 8 thirds root e okay we can multiply both sides by 3 to remove the 3 in the bottom so 3s is equal to 8 root 3 root e and we can divide by 8 so 3s over 8 is equal to root e, and we could square both sides, uh, so e would be this whole thing squared, so 9s squared over 64, and we might write it the other way around, 9s squared over 64. And the last question, example 9, finally, we're there now, all cases covered. Y is inversely proportional to the square root of x. Y the inversely tells us is equal to k over the square root of x. x is 64, y is 20, so 20 is equal to k over root 64. So therefore 20 equals k over 8 times by 8, 160 is equal to k. Rewrite our equation, y is equal to 160 over the square root of x. So that's part A done. Part B, find y when x is 100. Y would be 160 over the square root of 100, which is equal to 160 over 10, which is equal to 16. And for part C, find X and Y is 5. So 5 would equal to 160 over root X, times by root X, 5 root X equals 160, divide by 5, X is equal, root X is equal to 160 divided by 5, which is 32, square both sides, x is equal to 1024 and we're done. So that's everything and every possible case that can come up with direct and inverse proportion. Just to finish off, just make sure that you do check out the GCC revision videos on Hegarty Maths on the YouTube channel or follow me on Twitter. Thanks very much for watching, checking out for now, see you next time.